CNN Student News. I'm Carl Azus. Today is Earth Day and we'll tell you what that means in a few minutes, but we're starting in Ukraine. There's a crisis in the country and it's not calming down. Yesterday, U.S. Vice President Joe Biden arrived in Kiev, the Ukrainian capital. He promised more U.S. assistance, money mostly, for the struggling Ukrainian government. One challenge it faces is a lack of funds. Another, the fact that many people in eastern Ukraine don't support their new government. In about a dozen Ukrainian cities and towns, protesters have taken over buildings, demanding closer ties with Russia. That country has been accused of stirring up these protests and planning to take over more parts of Ukraine. Russia denies this, saying it has no sway over the protests in Ukraine. Next up, mourning in South Korea. More than 80 people lost their lives when a ferry sank off the country's coast on Wednesday. But more than 200 others are still missing and hopes are fading for rescuing any other survivors. South Korea's president says the action of the captain and some crew members were like murder. The captain's been charged with a number of crimes, from the poor sailing that caused the ship to sink to failing to help passengers escape. The captain says the cold water temperatures and fast currents made him hesitant to tell people to abandon ship. And though 174 people were rescued after the accident, no survivors have been found since April 16th. Still, divers continue to search the submerged ferry in the hopes that some passengers might have found an air pocket. At the 2014 Boston Marathon yesterday, a year after a terrorist attack at the same event, the race announcer told 36,000 runners, take back that finish line. And for the first time since 1983, an American won it. 38-year-old Meb Kaflesky of the U.S. was the first man to cross, having run the 26.2 miles in 2 hours, 8 minutes, and 37 seconds. For the women, 33-year-old Rita Jeptu from Kenya crossed first. Her time was 2 hours, 18 minutes, and 57 seconds. That's a course record for a woman. And these two had more competition to beat. There were 9,000 more runners than in 2013. In another example of Boston Strong, the event's largest crowd ever was expected to cheer them on. Time for the shout out. What's the only planet not named for a god in Greek or Roman mythology? If you think you know it, shout it out. Is it Earth, Mercury, Neptune, or Saturn? You've got three seconds. Go. While all other planets are named for gods or goddesses, Earth's name comes from the Old English and Germanic languages. That's your answer, and that's your shout out. I don't know if there's a Mercury Day or a Neptune Day, but if there is, it sure doesn't have a billion people participating in it. According to the group that organizes Earth Day every April 22nd, there are more than a billion people worldwide who are taking action. EarthDay.org says this is marked in 190 countries. People are planting trees, cleaning up their neighborhoods, generally taking action to improve the environment. The Earth Day movement started in 1970, and some things it's working on today include the Canopy Project. That aims to have a billion trees planted worldwide. Green cities, the goal is to get folks in growing urban areas to minimize the impact on the environment. And protecting the Asian elephant, which the Indian government now calls an endangered species. Binge watching, when you put on a favorite show and just watch it for hours and hours. It's taking a toll on some people's sleep patterns. Experts say that to get better sleep, we should shut off all of our screens an hour before bed. So that includes TV, phone, and computer. But those who binge watch are often staying up late to do it. And the internet is making this easier than ever. Something dramatic is taking place on screens, both large and small. Many call it a new golden age of entertainment. The quality of the programming has dramatically improved over the years. There are so many good shows out there. And like all good things, some of us can't get enough. I binge watched Scandal. I've binge watched CSI Miami. I am binge watching right now on Shameless. It is a total addiction for me. Oh sure, you could have binge watched TV shows in the good old days on DVDs or something called VHS tapes. But technology is taking marathon viewing to new levels, and Netflix is leading the way. Netflix is almost synonymous now with binge watching. Even though there's other ways to do it, Netflix is in some ways the easiest way to do it. Netflix is like walking into a library and having every book in a series all lined up on the shelf ready for you to read. It does that, but for television. It's not just Netflix helping us gorge on our favorite shows. 
Hulu, Amazon, and other services also feature unlimited hours of programming for viewing on TVs, tablets, laptops, and smartphones. Streaming gadgets like Google's Chromecast, Apple TV, the Roku Stick, and now Amazon's Fire TV all stream that content effortlessly to your set. And more Silicon Valley heavyweights are getting in on the content business. Yahoo is reportedly planning four new series. This powerful combination of original series and streaming devices means that once we get going, we don't have to stop. Netflix has added more than two and a half million subscribers so far this year, thanks in part to binging. When people pay for Netflix every month, they're paying for access to this giant library of shows. They, they may only binge on one of those shows a month or one of those shows a quarter, but they like having access to all of it. But for many, there is a downside. I feel like I've wasted a lot of time. When I get through that eight hours, I just feel like drained and I'm like, I cannot waste another hour of my life doing this. That could become a bigger problem. 14% of all American households own streaming devices and sales are expected to double by 2017. The line between Silicon Valley and Hollywood is blurring and both are reaping the benefits. Yesterday's roll call took us up the East Coast. Today we're taking a train west starting with the rail splitters. They're in the Midwestern city of Des Moines, the capital of Iowa. Next, we're moving over to Overton. It's in Nevada, and it's where the pirates are watching at Moapa Valley High School. And in the capital of the Gem State, the buzz is all about the Hornets. East Junior High School is on our roll in Boise, Idaho. Unless you live in Southern California, you probably haven't heard of a chef named Bruno Serrato. He hasn't won Top Chef or Chopped, but he was a top 10 CNN hero a few years ago. And the man who was once told by his mother to feed some hungry kids in his area has only seen his service grow. In the CNN Heroes follow-up, watch what difference a few years have made. Please join me in honoring CNN hero Bruno Serrato. When Bruno Serrato was honored as a CNN hero in 2011, he was serving pasta to nearly 200 low-income children a day in Anaheim, California. The pasta is ready. Since being awarded, Bruno's program has grown significantly. Hi guys, who likes my pasta? Me! Now we are 1,000 kids a day, every single day, Monday to Friday. Reaching kids in three more cities in Orange County. Each time I prepare a meal, each time I serve a kid, I know I give a security to a little kid, then he had a full stomach before he go to bed. Do you like my pasta? But Bruno does more than just filling their stomachs. I request one item, to share the table together. That means emotionally, as a family of kids together, eating a plate of pasta together. Delicious. Bruno's group has also gone beyond food. He's helped move 55 homeless families out of motels and into their own apartments. What do you think? I love it. You save their life completely, change their life completely. With no plans to slow down, Bruno's meal program will be in its fifth city this summer. My goal is to be all over the nation. How can I stop when children are starving? The day when children are not starving, I will stop. One Easter tradition that's been going on for 136 years now is officially known as the White House Easter Egg Roll. And the actual rolling of Easter eggs is certainly part of it. Kids dressed in their Sunday best using spoons to usher eggs across the South Lawn. But 30,000 people in all were expected, including sports stars, pop stars, celebrities, and a presidential round of basketball hooped things up as well. Pressure was on for that third shot, making it took an excellent effort. People were no doubt egging him on. He really had to hop to it, probably thinking no bunny was going to ruin that one. Don't blame me for those puns. I didn't cook up any of them. They were all tweeted to me on Easter. So thanks to those who sent them, and we'll have some new ones for you tomorrow.